Hello everyone and welcome to part 5 of this small tutorial series and what we're going to look at in this tutorial is how to make a lifestyle image with the car composited into a background photo and this is where we left the scene in the last tutorial and all I'm going to do is simply enable the shadow channel and then render that. Now that render is actually going to take quite a while to make so here's one I made earlier, that's what you get and what you need to do now is not to save the individual channels but what I want you to do is save the whole MXI by either going file save MXI as or just clicking this icon here save that somewhere safe and then open it up in Photoshop assuming you've got Photoshop and the Photoshop plugin okay so here I am in Photoshop and you'll notice that I've opened up the MXI and in the layers panel you've got all the different channels already there. The advantage of using an MXI as opposed to just saving out the different channels is that it gives a little bit more freedom because this image is actually 32 bits so you can change the exposure without losing any data but on the other hand there are certain things you can't do with a 32 bit image and that's the downsides. But the first thing to do is to copy in our backplate so just duplicate the layer and there we go, drag it down to the bottom. Then there's a few things we need to do to this, uh, nothing much different to what we did before. What we've got to do is apply this alpha layer as a mask to our render channel. So I'm going to hide the background mask and the background and then make the extra alpha layer visible. Command A to select all the pixels, Command C to copy it and then in the render channel make an alpha layer and then go to channels, make the mask visible, paste it in hide the mask again, go back to layers, unhide the alpha layer and there we go. Then what I've got to do is make the shadow channel visible and change the mode to multiply again. But because I haven't hidden all of the objects in the scene before rendering my shadow channel, what you get is this tiny half pixel margin on the shadow channel. And if I zoom in you'll see it better. Now there are ways of getting around this and we'll look at those slightly later on. But for now what I'm going to do is zoom back out again so I can see the whole image and just add in uh, an exposure adjustment layer, clip it to the below layer and turn my exposure down a bit and then I can use my other adjustment layers to make the image match a little bit better to the back plate if I want to. And what you can do to help with the fringing issue on the shadow layer is to select the alpha layer in the render channel, go to properties and mask edge, zoom in a little bit to make things a bit easier and then shift the edge slightly outwards. If you go too far then you're going to get this black margin instead but hopefully shifting the edge a little bit will help. I'm going to see what that looks like and then just use Command and Z to flip between them to see the difference. It is affecting the windows quite badly but I'm not too worried about that. It's made a great difference on the wheel especially and the front bumper. There is a slight black fringe all the way around now, but it depends on personal taste if you would rather that or the white fringe. Of course the best idea is to actually render the shadow channel separately as we did before, but this is simply showing an alternative method. Thanks very much if you've made it all the way through this small tutorial series. If you've enjoyed it, leave me some feedback, and if not you can still leave us feedback as well. If you'd like to have training like this first hand, email maxwellrenderbrightonctt at gmail.com where we do one-to-one -one, hands-on Maxwell training at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. There'll hopefully be more tutorials like this in the future, so please subscribe and keep watching. Thanks again. See you again soon.